Logging in, God will fight your battles for you in the name of Jesus. Whatever battle that is tormenting your life, the power of God will set you free in the name of Jesus. against your life shall be terminated by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it in Jesus' name. 
Yes. Receive it in Jesus' name. The word that is coming into your life, receive it in the name of Jesus. Every evil arrow in your life shall be terminated by the blood of Jesus. Every arrow is returning back to sender now. Every arrow upon your life. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost will return them back to sender. In the mighty name of Jesus. From south, it's returning back in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nitesh Square. God bless you. Jesse Komea, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Every evil arrow in your life shall be terminated by the blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus, we fight your battle. Lord of Jesus, Lord of Jesus, fight your battle. Thank you very much. God bless you in Jesus' name for what God is sending. God bless you. The power of God will rest upon you mightily in the name of Jesus. Every weapon that is fashioned against you shall never prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Receive the fire of God. In Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus will fight your battles. I don't care whatever battle you are going through. The blood of Jesus will fight your battles for you this hour. In the name of Jesus, receive it in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, we can be. Yes, yes, we are, we are already friends in the Lord. We are friends in the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. We are friends in the Lord. We are friends in the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Receive the blessing of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God the praise. We bless His holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, the omnipotent God, the ever-present God in time of trouble, is standing at your right hand side. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Receive it. Fire, receive it in Jesus' name. Carry your load. Owners of people load. Carry your load. Owners of my problem. Carry your load. Owners of people load. Carry your load. Every problem you are going through, let it disappear by the blood of Jesus. Whatever you are facing that is making you to struggle in life, 
I declare that the power of the Almighty God will scatter it in Jesus' name. Receive strength to move forward in the name of Jesus. Every evil load that is upon your life, back to sender in the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost fire in the name of Jesus. Receive the fire of the Almighty God in Jesus' name. Show them pepe. Show them pepe. Show them fire. Show them thunder. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Are you dancing and rejoicing before Him? As you are dancing and rejoicing, the fire of God will fall upon you in the name of Jesus. As you are dancing and rejoicing, the enemy upon your life is being tormented. As you are dancing and rejoicing, every problem is in your life is disappearing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Give God the praise. <laughs> King of kings and Lord of upon your life. Receive the fire of God into your life right now. In the name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Spirit of God. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. The fire of God that will give you breakthrough. The fire of God that will fight your battles for you. Receive it by the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire enter into your body right now in Jesus name Thank you Jesus 
You need the fire of God upon your life. In your business, you need the fire of God. In your marriages, you need the fire of God. In the life of your children, you need God's fire. In everything you are doing in life, you need the fire of God. Without God's fire, you cannot do it by your own power. Receive the fire in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Receive it now. Holy Ghost fire. Receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In our marriage, we need your fire. In everything we are doing, we need your fire. Amen. Fire from above. Fire from heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Fire. Divine fire. Fire from God. Manderebo keke rebo si ke manderebo se niara ba kanda ya. The balm of Gilead touch you right now in Jesus' name. In his life, every day. Send your fire, Lord. Send your fire in my life every day. Send your fire, Lord. Send your fire, Lord. Send your I need your fire in my life every day. Do you want the fire of God to burn in your homes? The fire of God to burn in the life of your children. The fire of God to burn in your marriages. The fire of God to burn in your place of work. The fire of the Almighty God to burn upon your lives and give you wisdom and power and glory. The fire of the Almighty God that will grace you and bring you to an unexpected end. Ah, receive it in Jesus' name. You need the fire of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I depend on you. Without the fire of God, you cannot exist. I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you. Jesus, you are my help. I depend on you. I depend on you. I depend on you. Jesus, you are my I depend on you. Give up, Give up. Set and keep up. All your body right now connect to the fire of God. Your bodies, all your body, as you are watching me through the screen, the fire of God, I release fire from this place into your bodies in the name of Jesus. The fire of God to connect to your bodies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Holy Ghost fire that will connect to your life, connect to your destiny, and take you to an unexpected end. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. You need the fire in your lives. You need God in your life. Only one that can make things work for you. Eh, eh, eh. Holy Ghost fire, enter into this place. Enter right now as you are watching me through the screen. Holy Ghost fire, begin to meet every need. Begin to shake every demon out. Begin to destroy every weapon of darkness from the temple in the name of Jesus. Begin to pull them out of the bodies of these peoples. In Jesus' name. I am a fire. 
fire. I am a fire. I am a fire. I am a fire. Are you a fire? 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 Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The fire of the Almighty God will enter through your bodies in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God begin to meet you wherever you are right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, take all the glory, take all the adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now we want to talk about midnight prayers. The importance of midnight prayers plays a meaningful effect to Christians who understand the power of the mystery behind the midnight exercise. The spirit of the Lord in your life, it will give you confidence and power to wrestle against the principalities and powers. And until the almighty God is there in that battle, you cannot come out victorious. The midnight battle. There is a battle that happens in the midnight. The spiritual battle happens in the midnight. It is called the midnight battle. Unless God, the almighty God, is there with you in that battle, you cannot come out victorious. He has to be there with you in that battle. That is the only time that you can come out victorious. There are levels that can attain in life without mastering the act of praying in the midnight. And there's no way a person can obtain a total breakthrough throughout without prolonged midnight prayers. If you want to obtain breakthrough in life, if you want to be victorious in what you are doing, if you want to succeed in what you are doing, in your education, you want to succeed. At your place of work, you want to succeed. In your school, you want your children to succeed. You have to engage in what is called midnight battle, which is called midnight prayer. Praying at the middle of the night. That is the only thing that can give you victory, that can make you be, to be victory, that can give you victory. There is no way a person can obtain total breakthrough without prolonged midnight prayers. And there is no way a person can overcome his enemies without praying at night. You want to overcome your enemies. The only way is to pray at the middle of the night. Midnight prayer is very, very effective in the life of every Christian. You call yourself a Christian. You are serving God. You are going to church every day. There are certain things you have to learn and there are certain things you have to put in the, into place. One, you must be able to pray at the middle of the night. Two, you must be able to fast and pray. Those things are very important. It's not only food, food, food. Every time is food, 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 food. Every time is food. You go to Kentucky, you eat. You eat, get home, you eat. You go to uh, McDonald's, you eat. Every time you are always eating and eating and eating food. If you want to be considered a Christian and somebody who follows after God, you must learn what is called fasting and prayer. That is the only thing that can bring victory into your life. That is the only thing that can make you to attain victory in your life. And you must also be able to pray at the middle of the night. It is sad, eh? but it's true that there are so many Christians that are full of sleeps. Everybody is sleeping nowadays. Today you are sleeping, tomorrow you sleep, every day you are always sleeping, always sleeping, always sleeping, every time you are always sleeping. 
at night you are sleeping in the day you are sleeping no time for prayer no time for anything christians are full of sleeping you sleep too much you are sleeping too much wake up from your bed wake up from your slumber wake up from your slumber and exercise what is called midnight prayers many christians are full of sleeps many believers have the enemy full access to operate in their lives eh? and they have limited interest in midnight prayer warfare they don't have interest in warfare prayer at all it doesn't concern them they don't want to pray at the middle of the night they don't have time for prayer all they have time for is go to work and make money come back home come and eat cook dinner and eat go to party go to a shopping center and everything that is the only thing that christians have time for no time for god no time for prayer no time for praise and worship no time for the things of god everything we are doing in life is all about 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 eating and sleeping and drinking eating and sleeping and drinking eating and sleeping and drinking drinking and there is something that happens during this sleep there are many demons that have successfully sown many tasks the task of backwardness, stagnation, failure at the edge of breakthrough, sickness, poverty, late marriages and others who are suffering confusion and mental attack. All these things happen at the middle of the night while you are sleeping and snoring. There is an attack. The enemy is not sleeping. The enemy is in the kingdom of darkness. Waging warfare is awake. He is trying to do something to you. But you that you are a Christian in your house, you are sleeping and you are snoring. Eh? The Bible says Jesus gave one illustration in the book of Matthew that a man went to the farm and planted good seed and put some men there to guide it but when the men started sleeping you see the men started sleeping the man planted good seed he put some people there to guide it but what happened the men that he put there to guide it they went to sleep they slept off while they slept off the enemy came to sow tars among the wheat and went away because you are sleeping when you sleep too much, there, are, there is so many things the enemy does in our life at the middle of the night. Because you fail to wake up to pray. Because you fail to wake up to give God praise. Because you fail to wake up to do the things that you are supposed to do. Midnight prayer is one of the effective ways that the enemy can bring someone down. It's also one of the effective ways that God can use to lift you up. It's the effective ways that God can use to do what? To lift you up. Midnight prayer is very, very effective. But we don't take it serious. We don't take it serious at all. We take it for granted. We don't have time for it. We don't have time for midnight prayer. That's the time when we are sleeping. And while you are sleeping, the enemy is not sleeping. That's why you dream that somebody is chasing you at the middle of the night. That's why you are dreaming that somebody is hitting something on your head at the middle of the night. That's why you dream that somebody is having sex with you in the dream. The enemy is not sleeping while you are sleeping. But if you are praying at the middle of the night, all those battles will disappear. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Every midnight battle that you are facing, I command by the power of the Almighty God, I command it to disappear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
for the second time I speak, every midnight battle that you are facing, is it somebody having sex with you in the dream? Is it somebody drinking with you in the dream? Is it somebody chasing you in the dream? Is it somebody making love to you anywhere? Is it somebody that is making things to you to happen that you don't understand? You wake up, you see something, you fall sick. Is it something that's hitting you? Is it an arrow that's hitting you that makes you to fall sick? Is it an arrow that hits you that brings cancer into your life? Is it that arrow that hits you that brings dementia into your brain? Does it make you to concentrate very well? Does it make you to think very well? I pray for you. Every arrow that hits you, every midnight battle that you are facing, that is allowing you to struggle, I break them by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Some Christians don't sleep too much at midnight hour. Eh? Re a real soldier of Christ never get tired of taking midnight prayer. If you are a real soldier of Christ, if you are a Christian, if I were to ask you now, are you a Christian or which religion do you belong to? You will tell me you are a Christian. But for me, I... Eh? Uh, uh, you will tell me that you are a Christian. But you are a Christian, you are serving God. You are doing the things of God. If you are a Christian, as, as you said, you are a Christian, you must be able to wake up at midnight. If you are a Christian, as you said, you are a Christian, you must be able to challenge the devil. If you are a Christian, that you say you are a Christian, God has given you power and authority to trample upon the devil and the serpent. There's no need for you to be afraid at midnight because the Bible said that God has not given you and I the spirit of fear. He has given us the spirit of power, knowledge, and sound mind. You don't have the spirit of fear. There's no need for you to fear the enemy at the middle of the night. When the enemy comes, the only thing you need to attack him, use the word of Jesus to attack him. He will disappear and run back. But because you are sleeping too much at the middle of the night, that is why you are facing so many battles in life. You sleep too much. Wake up. Wake up, my brothers. Wake up and don't slumber sleeping. Wake up and don't slumber sleeping. Wake up and don't slumber sleeping. Wake up and don't slumber yourself sleeping. The Bible said Jesus, the, 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 the sword seed, the sword seed, Jesus put people to guide them, but because the men slept off, if the men had not slept off, if they had been on guard, the enemy will not have come to sow seed, wicked seed there. Because you are sleeping at the middle of the night, that's why the enemy creep up at the middle of the night. To put sickness in people's body. That's why the enemy creep up at the middle of the night. To make some people to be big, begin to run mad. That's why the enemy creep up at the middle of the night. To make some people to, glow by, to go blind. Because you are sleeping. Every battle. Every midnight battle. That's tormenting your life. That's making you to struggle in life. That's making you not to want to succeed. I command it to disappear right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The truth is that any Christian that don't sleep too much, that is they convert their night hour into midnight prayers. Eh? Such person will always overcome the enemy. If you are somebody that don't sleep too much, you will always overcome the enemy. With a fight of faith. Because you are not sleeping. When the enemy is chanting his demons. You are facing him with fire. Eh? Psalm 119 verse 2 says. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee. Because of the righteous judgment. It will happen at midnight. At midnight. It is at midnight that I will give you thanks. It is at the time of midnight. That is when I will give thanks unto you. I will give you thanks at midnight. Not in the afternoon. Not in the day. At midnight. At 12 from 12 p.m. midnight. I, I begin to give God thanks. I begin to worship God. 
I begin to exalt the name of God from midnight. Eh? There is a power in midnight warfare prayer. There is a power in midnight warfare prayer. There is a power inside it. Eh? There is a power in midnight and God values midnight prayers more than anything else. Eh? He values midnight prayer. If God is going to set you free, if God is going to deliver you from the problems you are going through, it will not happen during the day. I'm telling you, go and read your Bible. I'm going to quote some chapters there for you very soon. If God is going to deliver you from what you are going through, it will not happen during the day. It will happen at midnight. It will happen at midnight. But because you are not praying at midnight, there's nothing happening. You are praying and interceding. You are praying and interceding. It's true you are praying and interceding. But you also need to include midnight prayer into what you are doing. If you are a devoted Christian, you are called yourself a child of God, and you cannot pray at night, then something is wrong. You need to check yourself and find out what is wrong. A good Christian, somebody who wants to follow God, somebody who wants to serve God, somebody who wants to do the will of God, somebody who wants to get close to God, must be able to wake up and pray at the middle of the night. That is the only thing that can give you victory. That is the only thing that can give you success. That is the only thing that can break your way for two. If God is going to set you free, he will set you free at the middle at midnight. The complaints of many eh, is that the nature of their job. Because of my job, I cannot pray. I have to work. When I get home, I am tired. When I get home and tired, that is so, many people's complaint. The nature of their job. If you cannot stand up and pray at midnight to clear off satanic arrows hiding in the clouds against your open heavens, then you will be walking effortlessly. Effortless, effortlessly eh? You will be walking without any result. Eh? If you open to the book of Job chapter 4 verse 20, it says they are destroyed from morning to evening. And they perish forever without any regarding it. They perish forever without any regarding it. Eh? The enemy's mode of oppression is usually to shoot their evil arrows while their victim is asleep. That is their mode of oppression. While you are sleeping, you are, you, you are not praying. The enemy is not sleeping. The enemy is converting their own meeting. And you are sleeping on your bed. You are not effective. By the time you wake up, ah, you stress yourself. Ah, ah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Eh? The mode of the enemy is to shoot their arrow while you are asleep. But at the time the person wakes up, he or she will see everything going wrong. It's at the middle of the night that it happens. By the time you wake up, why do people fall sick? Why is it that all of a sudden, the, the previous day, there was nothing wrong with you the previous day? You slept well, you ate well. All of a sudden, when you wake up in the morning, you, the, the person discovered that he was sick. He began to vomit. He began to vomit. He began to vomit. Then they rushed him to the hospital. From the hospital now, he becomes something serious. From the hospital now, they now put him in the ward. They now discover that something is wrong with his throat. Something is wrong with his throat. That's not making him to breathe properly. From that now, they discover that he has cancer. He has cancer. His cancer is the problem. From the cancer now, they now discover another thing. And then the person went to the hospital by himself. The person is now being admitted to the hospital for more than three days for no reason. That is the work of the enemy. That is the work of the enemy. You went to the hospital by yourself. Nothing happened to you. 
But at that time, they will begin to discover so many things. So many things. By the time you look at it, you are not even expecting them to admit you into the hospital. By the time they now admit that person to the hospital, and now the person is now in the hospital, spending days and weeks and being treated for no reason. And then they will now tell you in the hospital, there's nothing wrong with him. We can't find anything. They cannot find anything because what is happening to you is a spiritual arrow. You can only see it with spirit. You cannot see it with naked eyes. The doctors cannot see it. The doctors will not see anything wrong. It is because it is a spiritual battle. You need to face it with spiritual weapons. That is why the battle of the midnight prayer is very, very effective in the life of a Christian. If you are a Christian and you are watching this video and you cannot pray at the middle of the night, you need to check your life. If you are a Christian and you are watching this video and you cannot pray for three or four hours every night, then something is wrong. You need to ask God to intervene in your life and, and, and bring that power back upon your life. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. The power that will enable you to have an effective prayer at the middle of the night. Receive it by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak for the second time. Power to have an effective prayer at the middle of the night. Power to have an effective prayer at the middle of the night. Receive it by the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Eh? At that time, the person wakes up. The Bible says they can attack businesses. They will attack the person's business at the middle of the night. They will attack the person's marriage. They will attack the person's finances. They will attack the person's relationship. They will attack the person's health. Sometimes destiny of victims are taken to their covens and tied. You see, they take them to their coven and then they tie them up. They tie them up in the spirit train. And then when they tie the person up, the person is not able to do anything. You don't see that you are the person is moving forward. He's not achieving anything. The person is moving forward. Nothing is happening in his life. He's just struggling. He's struggling. He's struggling. He got a job. He just got a good job three months ago. All of a sudden, so he just got a good job maybe in a week. He just got a good job maybe within a week. And after, after three weeks, he discovered that they sacked him from the job for no reason. He did not do anything wrong. Go. Nothing was wrong. Go. All of a sudden, the manager of the, the, the job just tell him, I don't like you. you I don't like you anymore. I used to like you before. I don't like you anymore. They have turned the manager against him in the spirit train. The, because so that he can lose his job. They have turned that manager who used to like him against him in the spirit realm. So when they turn the manager against you in the spirit realm, the manager will begin to tell you he doesn't like you anymore. You need to get out of this place. And the manager will sack the person for no reason. Why? Because you refuse to pray at the middle of the night. Every midnight battle that is making you to struggle, I command by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it disappear in the name of Jesus. Every midnight battle that you are going through. Every midnight battle. Whatever it is that you are struggling with in life. You cannot pay your rent. It's a midnight battle. Some people are struggling to pay their rent. They are struggling to pay their mortgage. Some people are working. But some people are doing three jobs, three jobs. And for the fact that you are doing three jobs, you cannot even make, you cannot even have 300 pounds in your account. It's an arrow from the kingdom of darkness. If you are doing two or three jobs, even if you are doing one job, the blessing of God should be able to come upon you. But what is happening? You are doing two jobs. You wake up very early in the morning. You go to work and then you do 
you go to work, you go to the second job, you go to work. By the time you collect all your salary and everything, everything has already been exhausted. The second day, everything has finished already. It has been exhausted. You are working again for another month. You are working again. You are struggling. You are working again. You are struggling. You are working again. You are struggling. You are working again. You make another money. Before the money comes, something is already waiting to swallow it. That is the enemy. Because you refuse to pray at the middle of the night. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Power. Every midnight battle that is affecting your life, that is making you to struggle. You are working, you are doing three jobs, but yet you are struggling. You are struggling, you are struggling, you are struggling with the children. Everything doesn't go right the way it's supposed to go. Everything doesn't work for you the way it's supposed to work for you. Every midnight battle that's affecting your life, I command it to disappear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The battle of the midnight, the warfare of the midnight, the warfare of the midnight. Remember that if you must overcome the problems around you and dismantle the oppression of the wicked in your life, then you must understand that the power of midnight prayer and learn to wake up at the middle of the night and pray. For example, look at the activities of witches and wizards. Eh? These are agents of darkness possessed by the spirit of witchcraft. Eh? The spirit is what is known to be one of the most wicked spirits in the kingdom of darkness. One of the most wicked spirits that you can find. And they attack their victims at midnight without mercy and forgiveness. The enemy does not have mercy upon you. He does not have mercy upon you. He does not need to forgive you. You can beg him and beg him and beg him. He does not forgive. Satan does not have the spirit of forgiveness. He has no mercy upon anybody. He has no mercy. You can be, you can be a chairman. You can be a doctor, whoever you are. Satan has no mercy. His agenda is to bring that person down. His agenda is to make sure that that person does not get to the top. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Every arrow that wants to stop you from reaching the top, I command that arrow to disappear in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every arrow that wants to stop you from reaching the top, I destroy that arrow by the power of the anointing in the name of Jesus. The Bible said there shall come a time the yoke shall be broken and the body shall be lifted up the shoulder. Why? Because of the power of the anointing. The anointing commands power. The anointing commands power. You have that power inside you. Trust me, I tell you. You have the power inside you because you are a bona fide child of God. God has said you are a child of God. You are not a slave. You are a child of God. You need to access it from heaven. Pray and ask God to release it upon you. You have the power to possess it. The only thing you need to do is ask. The Bible says, ask, it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. All you need to do, my friend, is to ask for that power. And God will release it upon you. Power to destroy the enemy. Power to shake the kingdom of darkness. Power to tear down the enemy. You have struggled enough in life. The arrows that the enemy has hit you is too much. It's time for you to act. It's time for you to stand up. It's time for you to wake up from your slumber and start that midnight prayer. Begin to pray at the middle of the night. The only thing that can give you victory in this life is midnight prayer. Without it, there is no other way. Because the enemy operates at the middle of the night. The enemy does not operate during the day. 
that is why you need to, if you want to succeed in life, if you want to be successful in life, if you want to achieve good things in life, you must be able to wake up at midnight and begin to pray by fire, begin to destroy the weapons of darkness, begin to scatter the enemy. That is the only time that you can receive victory. If God is going to set you free from what you are going through, it will happen at the middle of the night, but it cannot happen because that is the time you are sleeping. You are sleeping at night. You sleep too much. You are sleeping too much. Every time you are always sleeping, you come from work, you are sleeping. Every time you are sleeping, in the day you are sleeping, you have to go to work. I know you have to go to work. Everybody has to go to work. But you take your sleeping as a pill that if you don't sleep, you cannot go to work. Who told you that? No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You need to get yourself acquainted into midnight prayer. Prayer and fasting so that God, the power of God, can release victory into your life. If God is going to set you free from what you are going through, it will happen at the middle of the night, not during the day. That is why you must wake up and pray very hard at the middle of the night so that you can deliver yourself from the kingdom of darkness, so that you can deliver yourself from the enemy who does not want you to succeed. Midnight prayer, I said, is a time of transition eh, from one day to another. Eh, God can bring what? He can bring a transition into your life as you pray at midnight. He can transit your life completely and bring you where you are supposed to be. Eh? Midnight, what the Bible says, midnight is a time of great spiritual activity. That is when spirits are active. That is when the demon is active. That is when the enemy is active. At midnight, both good and evil. Eh? Destinies of man are shaped and interrupted at midnight. It is at midnight that your destiny can be shaped. It is at midnight that this, your, the same destiny can be interrupted. They can interrupt that destiny at midnight. Eh? They can interrupt that destiny at midnight. At a natural, at a natural level. The Bible says great victories have been won when nations were caught by surprise by their armies. When their armies were asleep at midnight. Eh? Satan launches attack at midnight. That is when he launches attack at midnight. Eh? He feeds people in their dreams. That is why you have bad dreams. Eh? He rapes others. And then as they sleep at midnight, somebody is sleeping with you at midnight, sleeping with you at the middle of the night. It is the enemy. Somebody having sex with you. At the middle of the night, they are taking something from you. They are taking that thing. They are, they, are, they are withdrawing something. That thing that is supposed to make you to succeed. That thing that is supposed to give you, make, take you to your new level. When they have sex with you, they are withdrawing that thing from your body. So you are stagnant in one place. You are not moving. Because they have already had sex with you at the middle of the night. And they have already taken that thing. And they are withdrawing I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Everything the enemy has stolen upon your life at midnight whatever it is that they have stolen in your life at midnight i restore them back by the power of the anointing in the mighty name of jesus i speak for the second time everything the enemy have stolen what have they stolen in your life what have they stolen in your life that is making you to struggle what what are they stolen in your life that's making you to not to succeed? What are they stolen in your life that they made to sack you at your place of work? What are they stolen in your life that they made to beat you down? What are they stolen in your life 
and they press you down and you cannot call the name of Jesus. I command by the power of the anointing, let it disappear in the name of Jesus. Let it disappear right now. Whatever the enemy has stolen in your life, I restore them back by the blood of Jesus. I restore them back by the power of the Holy Ghost. I restore them back in the name of Jesus. Whatever they have stolen from your life at midnight, I come against it. I restore them back by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Great calamities are spiritually affected at midnight. The Bible says God had to wait until midnight to execute judgment in Egypt. God had to wait until midnight to execute judgment in Egypt. God says the Lord, about midnight, this is from the book of Ex Ex Exodus chapter 11 to 4 to 6, when God sent Moses to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh refused to let the to let the, let let the let the, the Israelites go. This is the miracle that God did. The last miracle that He did. He God says that about midnight. Look at the, what's going to happen. About midnight, God wants to set them free. About midnight, I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn to Pharaoh who sits on the throne, even at the firstborn of the female behind who is behind the hand me, all of the firstborn of the animals, all of them will die. Midnight is the time people are most vulnerable to spiritual attacks. About midnight, God said, he will go out, he will go out about midnight. It is midnight that terrible things happen. If it is midnight that you receive your victory, you are waiting for victory, you have waited and waited and waited. You are praying and praying and praying. You are asking God to give you victory. You are asking God to give you power. You are asking God to release favor unto you. These things can happen at midnight. It is at midnight that you receive your blessing. It is at midnight that you receive your breakthrough. As a Christian, you can break. You can break open closed doors as you pray at midnight. You can break doors down. You can open closed doors down as you begin to pray at midnight. You can destroy the kingdom of darkness. As you are praying at midnight, the midnight battle prayer. It's a serious thing. Many Christians find it difficult to pray. They sleep a lot. Sleep and sleep and sleep. People eat. Is it food that you have come to eat in this world? You are eating too much. You eat too much. Many people eat too much. Learn to fast. Learn to pray. It is what can strengthen you. It is what can give you power. You don't learn it in a day. You learn it gradually. Gradually. It's a gradual thing that you need to learn. You need to learn it gradually. Small by small, you get into it. You get into it. It will strengthen you and give you power over the enemy. The midnight battle prayer is a serious thing that you need to concentrate yourself on. Face it and God will deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Samson lay low until midnight. Then he arose at midnight. You see, Samson lay low. Samson did not do anything. It was at midnight now. At midnight, the Bible say, eh, he lay low. He took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two gates and pulled them down. Pull them on his shoulders and carry them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. He pulled them down at midnight. He killed all his enemies at midnight. He destroyed them at midnight. He scattered them at midnight. He pulled them down at the middle. Mysterious things happen. The most midnight. Have you lost anything? Eh? Have you lost anything? 
very dear, mysterious circumstances, chances that you operate, chances that operate, op uh, that, 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 that the operation was carried out at the midnight hour. Eh? Remember the harlot in, in Solomon's time. You remember the harlot, the harlot who lost her child by weeping on it at midnight. It was at midnight that she stole her friend's child at midnight. It was at midnight she stole her friend's child. She waited until midnight. She stole her friend's child because her own was dead. She stole her friend's child at midnight. Uh, then put the dead child towards her friend and took the alive one and put it towards herself. It was at midnight that this thing happened. And as she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me, while your handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child and laid her, her, her dead child in my bosom. The midnight battle. Eh? If you are not receiving something good at midnight, then there's a chance a high that there are evil changes happening against that person at midnight. Eh? Wicked oppressions happen at midnight. Wicked oppressions. Eh? We must arise. Let us arise, brothers. Let us arise and speak in one accord. Let us arise and fight the enemy at midnight. We must wake up. Wake up and pray. We must wake up and pray. There's no time to sleep. There's no time to slumber. It's time to be alert. It's time to be spiritually alert. It's time to be active in the things of God. It's time to walk in the ways of God. It's time to be spiritually alert. Let us wake up. Wake up from your slumber. Let us begin to fire prayer at midnight. Let us begin to pray the prayer of a righteous one. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's what the Bible says. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let us begin to fire prayer at midnight in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says in Psalm 11962, I will rise and give thanks to you because of your righteous judgment at midnight. At midnight, I will rise and give thanks to you because of your righteous judgment. Eh? Remember Paul and Silas. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God when they locked them up in prison. They locked Paul and Silas up in prison during the day. They did not do anything. They waited until midnight. As soon as it was midnight, 12 a.m. 12 on the dot, bound, ah, they began to fire prayer. The Bible says Paul and Silas were singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. Hey, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking, and immediately all the doors flung open, and everyone's chains were loose. At the middle of the night, all these things happen. God delivered them at the middle of the night. God set them free at the middle of the night. What is that problem you are going through? What is that difficulty that you are going through? What is it that's making you to cry? What is it that's making you to weep? What is it that is making you to cry that you are not walking? You are walking it out, but it's not so, it's not going the way you're supposed to walk. The enemy has placed something there at midnight. The enemy has placed something there at midnight. The enemy has place something there at midnight i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit of the living god whatever midnight battle you are facing whatever midnight battle you are facing that's making you to struggle in life that's making things to look as if it's not working out for you i command that battle to disappear in the name of jesus christ of nazareth I command that battle to disappear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 12 o'clock midnight is the best time to make serious intercessions. 
it is the best time to make serious intercessions. Eh? It is the best time to make serious intercessions with God. At midnight. That is when you speak to God. That is when God hears you. That is when God delivers you. That is when God works miracles in your life. That's when miracles happen in your life. That's when things begin to turn around in your life. That's when everything the enemy has stolen, God return them back in your life. That's why you have a dream. Sometimes you have a dream that God is doing something in your life. Sometimes you have a dream that the enemy has taken something, but God has restored them back. Sometimes you have a dream and uh, because you are praying at midnight, all those things that you have been, the enemy has taken, God will restore them back at the middle of the night. And remember this, praying at midnight is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that will not go unrewarded. You will be rewarded for it. The world can give you a word, but God will give you reward. The world will give you a word. They can give you a word. When you are singing well, you sing very well, they give you an award. Uh, you are doing things, they give you an award. Uh, you are the first person to win, they give you a, an award. A golden chain, a uh, silver, uh, gold, silver and bronze. Oh, you came first. You came first, they give you an award. God does not give award, he gives reward. Eh? Praying at midnight is a sacrifice, is a sacrifice that will not go unrewarded. God will give you the reward of praying at midnight. When you pray at midnight, the reward and success will come to you. There's nothing that you do for God that goes cut free. Everything that you are doing for God, it may look as if things are not working the way you think. It may look as if it's not working to you. It's not working. Sometimes you may get tired. Sometimes you want to rest. Sometimes you are tired. Sometimes things are tiring, tiring you. Sometimes the enemy will bring a bad dream. Listen carefully. Sometimes when you are praying at midnight, the enemy will bring a bad dream to make you to stop praying. Don't stop. Continue your prayer. The enemy is, that prayer that you are praying is hitting the enemy. The prayer that you are praying is hitting the enemy. So they bring a bad dream, a bad dream to you to dream at midnight for something that will make you to stop prayer, for something that will make you to stop the prayer you are praying because they don't want you to pray. Don't give up that prayer. Continue to pray. 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 And God will deliver you at midnight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praying at midnight is a sacrifice that will not go unrewarded. God sees your desperation through the sacrifices that you make. You are making sacrifices every day. You are waking up. You are waking up. You are waking up. You are praying. You are waking up. You are praying. It's a sacrifice that you are praying. Why some people are sleeping? You are waking up and you are praying. You are waking up and you are praying. You don't have time to sleep. You pray and pray and pray. Every night you pray. Every day you pray. Every night you pray. Most especially make sure your prayer is focused at midnight. You can pray during the day, maybe once or twice. The majority of prayers that you pray, majority of prayers that you pray must be concentrated at midnight. You can pray more times at midnight. You can pray like two or three times during the day. But all your prayers should be focused on midnight prayer. Because that is the only time that God is going to set you free. That is the only time that God is going to deliver you. Lamentations 2 verse 9. Arise. Cry out in the night. That's what the Bible says. Arise. Cry out. The Bible says don't it's not in the day. Cry out in the night. The Bible asking you to cry out in the night. 
cry out in the night. In the beginning of the waterless, pour out your hearts like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards him for the life of the young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Cry out at the middle of the night. Cry to him. Cry to him. Cry to him at the middle of the night. Cry out to him. He will hear you. He will answer you. He will deliver you from whatever you are going through. He will sort you out. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Whatever this is that you are going through, every midnight battle that tie down your hand, every midnight battle that tie you down, they have tied you down in a coven. They have surrounded you with something. They surround you with something. They place you in the middle. They surround you with a coven. They tie you down towards the tree. They have a padlock. They have locked that padlock in the spirit train. They take a padlock. There is a padlock hanging on the door. They throw it inside the river. They lock the padlock. They throw the key away. Ah, makendebo sekaya, muskalebo senda yebo kenda yama. I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit of the Living God. Every padlock that has been locked in the spirit train, I command them to open right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command the power of the Almighty God going on in the midnight. I'm telling you, I can assure you that you will not like to sleep too much anymore. Because the Bible describes the night as the hour of darkness when no all evil spirits are being perpetuated. But when a truly born again Christians begin to pray at night, demons will not be able to operate in that area. They will flee for their lives. That is why Satan and his cohibit hate Christians that pray, that always pray at night. If you are praying at night, the enemy will hate you. The enemy will not want to come close to you. Because you pray at the middle of the night. So brethren, if you want to pray, pray very hard. If you want to take midnight prayers, ensure that you take it very well. It is dangerous to take midnight prayers and sleep off in process. Devil always loves Christians that sleep and slumber during the battle. Eh? Any pastor who does not master the art of praying at midnight hours, he should not be surprised that his ministry will receive mysterious attacks and die a natural death. Eh? Take midnight prayers very seriously and you will experience peace, joy, healing, deliverance from the powers of darkness, eh? progress, victory in every situation, and health in your life and your family. From now henceforth, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. We give God the praise. All glory, all power, all dominion be unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' anointed name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening. As we are listening to this, let us take midnight prayer very, very seriously. And God will continue to support us and guide us and direct our steps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Shall we share the grace together? If you have not given your life to Jesus, remember Jesus is coming back very soon. He's coming back very soon. Give your life to Jesus so that he can set you free and deliver you from whatever you are doing. Eh? God bless you in Jesus' name. Shall we share the grace together? With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Until another time, maybe Monday or Friday or Wednesday, God bless you in Jesus' name.